Propositions on their own are all well and good. They're much more useful, especially in the context of computer science, when we combine these things with different operations. And if you know how to code, these things are going to be very standard for some of these. And then we'll talk about some that are not so standard later. The first one we're going to do is the logical and, sometimes called a conjunction. That is often used more in the mathematical parlance than in the computer science parlance, but some people might call this a conjunction. So this is the idea of combining two things. My name is Nick and I live in Columbus, Ohio. We're combining two statements into one individual statement that combined is either true or false, depending on whether or not the first thing and the second thing are true or false. These things get sort of weirdly existential sometimes when you try to talk about them. So to deal with this, one of the most common ways is to just write down definitively when this is true, this thing is true as well. We might call this the truth table. Many people may have seen this before, but I'll draw it out. You to create a truth table, you create columns for each of what are called the atomic propositions, the things that make it up, these fundamental variables. So P and Q up in the thing above there are my two atomic propositions. You may notice I have a bit of a strange symbol here. That's the way I draw my Q. I draw it as a cursive Q. I apologize for that. And what we do is we effectively exhaust all of the options for what P and Q could be. So one possibility might go as well, what occurs when P is true and Q is true? You might say that's one option. What if they're both false? So maybe we have true, false, and then false, true. I often find that sort of reasoning to be a bit awkward to do to guarantee I get all the possible combinations. Instead, I'm gonna order these in a slightly different way and talk about why I did it that way. So. This isn't that complicated with two variables. When we see things with more variables later, it will be helpful to have some systematic way to write these things down. So one other way you come up with all the possibilities would be that you could say, well, P can be true. And I'm going to look at all the possible options for Q when P is true. So when P is true, Q can has two options. It is either true or it is false. So it is either true or it is false. And similarly, when P is false, there are two options for Q. It is either true or it is false. So we have a true false there as well. And that is a bit more systematic. So I tend to like that approach more, especially when you get to three, four, five variables. There, these combinations will grow rather quickly. We'll talk about that in a little bit, how many there are given the number of variables. But the it is useful to have a systematic approach for coming up with these things. So we draw a column for each of those, and then we write a column for the compound proposition. This is what we call it when we combine two atomic propositions. We call it a compound proposition. And we just say what is true. P and Q, if we read the sort of janky English that's been up there that I've ignored reading the entire time, it says that it is true exactly when P and Q are both true and false otherwise. So it's true when they are both true. And it is false otherwise. So that is and that's a very long winded way to explain what is a very obvious English statement. But these things can be a little weird, especially when we get to or only because in English, this is a bit ambiguous. Some other languages have constructs for this that fit more naturally and make the mathematics a little bit less jank, I guess. So the next operation is the disjunction. Again, that's typical math fanciness. I just call it the logical or or or. And again, if you're used to programming, you should be accustomed to this operation. So let's do the exact same procedure, much faster this time. We create a column of P, a column for Q. We say P is true and Q is true. We say P is true and Q is false. We say P is false and Q is true. P is false and Q is false. And then we create a column for P or Q. And this says the statement is true whenever P is true, Q is true or both P and Q are true, which might seem a little awkward. In English, you might try to say something like uh, you want soup or salad or something like that. And the sort of implication is that you don't get both soup and salad, right? However, in logical mathematics, we, uh, we assume that both being true does not invalidate it. So for this, we have that it is true when they're both true. And as long as there is any T in any of the columns, as long as there's a T present, we will count that as true. And finally, it is false if both things are false. I can't say my name is Greg or I live in Texas because neither of those things are true. I can't say it, it's just a lie. So that is a false statement. 
The last operation, again, if you program, you'll be used to this, is the logical negation, the word not in something like Python. It can be a tilde in some languages. It can be an exclamation point in some languages. Just the idea of taking a variable and looking at its negation. This one is a bit silly to write down. So we're going to write a column for all the variables. All right, we did it. This one of them. And then a column for all of them combined together, which is the one variable. And this is uh, true or false. Those are the two options for our one variable we have. And if P is true, then we get that not P is false. And if P is false, then we get that not P is true. Just take the symbol and switch which one it is. While we're talking about these fundamental operations and or and not, we're going to also mention that some people will use, I'll write this off to the side, true, they will write as one, and false, they will write as zero. Especially in electrical engineering, this is a common practice. It's also kind of nice for a sort of yeah, a carpal tunnel avoidance idea, which is that T takes two pen strokes, F, depending on how you draw, takes two to three pen strokes. Those one and zero take one. So if you're feeling lazy, like me always, uh, one and zero can be often very nice to use instead.